The previous video showed you how to create our background for our book cover. It goes along with this lesson here, Type Gradient Pencil Tool Book Cover. So let's go ahead and click on that. And in this lesson, we're trying to recreate this book, this book from the Amazon Play Store. Max at Night, it's a book for children um, ages three to five. And you can see it was just released September 6th, which is about two weeks ago. So we're going to recreate this. In the previous video, I actually showed you how to create the gradient background, also the gradient land, and the moon and stars with an outer glow. So in the previous video, we actually created this. If I zoom out, we created this here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the type tool to add the text to the book cover, and then I'm also going to show you how to use the pencil tool to actually draw out the cat. So let's go ahead back to our class page. You can see this is what we're going for. We're recreating that. There's my Photoshop objectives, right? Here is the example of, again, the cat might not be perfect. Again, this is your first time um, with the tool. This is the previous video that shows you how to get to this point. So let's go ahead and try to recreate and finish this. So I'm going to do the type tool first. You can see I have by Edvery. At the bottom it says New York Times best-selling creator of Max the Brave and then up here I need to do Max at Night. You can see each text is a little bit different so we're going to have a couple different text layers. So let's go back into Photoshop. You can see this is the background. I put it all in a folder and I locked that folder because I'm done with that folder. I'm going to go ahead and make another folder and called it text. So I'm going to put all my text in here. I'm going to have a bunch of different text layers. So text tool right here. Go ahead and click on it. And anytime you use a tool, you always want to check out your options bar. You can see the options bar for the tools. You have the style of text or the face of the text. Here is some text allow you to have bold italics underlined. This font does not, right? So that's grayed out. But if I go to one of the standard fonts, Times New Roman, you can see now I can change if the text is going to be bold italics. So you have that. This right here is your sizing tool. You can actually click on this drop down and select whatever you want. Let's say I want it six. But if I scroll left or right, it basically allows me to scale it without having to type anything in. Then I have my analyzing anti aliasing and you can see if I want the text script Chris sharp or strong if I want the text left or line right aligned I have my color that I could select any color I want for the text and I have something called text warping and I have my character presets menu that you can actually pull out and scale the text horizontally there's a bunch of things we'll look at the character and paragraph box in a second so let's go ahead and start we want to do by, and then we're going to have a different set of text because the way it looks, Ed, Greer, and then a different set of text at the bottom that kind of matches our cursive. Might not be exact, but we can get pretty close. So I want to zoom into this area. Here's another tool that you're going to use. So here's the zoom tool. You can zoom using this tool, or you can simply type in your area here. Also, there's keyboard shortcuts, Control plus Control minus, or Command plus Command minus on the Mac. But let's look at the Zoom tool. So you click on it, you can see there's a plus inside of there. So it, I simply click. If I want to reduce it, if I look at my options bar, right, I can select this one and go that way. But also on the keyboard, if I hold Option for the Mac and Alt for Windows, it'll change automatically back and forth. You can see it's changing up here anytime I push it on the keyboard. So you can see I can do fit the screen, or I could do fill screen. So there's some options even for your zoom tool. I want to zoom in this area. So let's zoom out a little bit. I'm going to put by Ed Veer. So coming back, Ed Veer, I want to put by in cursive, Ed Veer is going to be in a different font. 
So I'm going to use my text tool. And even though I selected one text tool, there's horizontal text, vertical text. You simply wanted an outline of text, and then you wanted to shade it in and make effects and those type of things. You could do those as well. But we're going to do simple horizontal text. I'm going to go ahead and type by like that. Now, I want it to be cursive. So to make change it, I'm going to select this. And then I'm going to, I can select these and try to guess what it looks like. Or what I like to do is double click here. Now the face is selected. If I push up on my keyboard, you can see it allows me to do this a lot faster. And I can scroll through until I see something I like. I kind of like that one, so I might remember to sneal around handed. That's cursive as well. I like that one. That is Signa Painter. Let's see if we could find something. You can see I'm just simply pushing up on my keyboard. And it's, there we go. That's what I wanted. That right there, I think, looks pretty close to that buy. So I'm going to come back here. I can zoom out. And I have my buy. I use my move tool to move it over, right? And you can see in my text folder I have buy. Now, I'll go ahead and click. Could not complete because of a program error. Go ahead, click again. Ed Veer. Now I think Ed Veer was caps. No, it wasn't. And this is kind of pointed, so I gotta find that text now. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I can select all of this. I'm gonna double click inside of here and really, by luck, it looks very similar. So I have Ed Veer here. And we have that the cursive. We have the Edvir as well. Edvir looks a little bit bolded. Let's see if that gives us that option. Now, if I wanted to highlight all of this, again, I could click here and click inside of here and then drag it all. But what a shortcut is if I double click on this T right here, it automatically highlights everything for me. So this one does have bold. Let's see what bold looks like. Oh, it looks better to me. It looks more like the original. So I have my buy. I need to move my buy up, I believe. And New York Times bestselling author. So that's kind of here. I can make it a little bit bigger. And again, this is just a review. So I could click on my move tool, use my show transform controls, scale it up how I want it, right? And then when I'm done with my scaling, I approve it here and turn my off. Now I want to move my move tool to move my buy over and nudge it a little bit. So I have bad ed veer. And now at the bottom, I want to say New York best, so best selling creator of Max the Brave. So go ahead back into our text tool. Simply going to click New York best selling author of Max the Brave. So obviously, I'm going to highlight all that text. I want to use my options bar to scale it. And I can move it over. And how do we have it on the page? New York Times best selling is on one line creator of. So on the next line, creator of. And is it centered or is it left? It's actually centered, so that's okay. So it's centered because it's centered here. I was seeing if it was going to be left. If I wanted it left like that or centered. But I'm going to do centered. I'm going to put that underneath. And still scale it down some more and we already know it's Mistral so I can just select my drop down find Mistral now because it did that I want to scale it up some more 
maybe like that. I'm going to go ahead and approve. But I want to stretch it out. So you can see it goes from this side all the way to that side. So we're going to use our move tool again. Let's move it over to here. And then I'll simply use my transform option to scale it over like that. Maybe bring it down a little bit. And over. And I can approve that. Take it off. I'm going to move this up. And I'll move both this. I'll move this up as well. And Ed Beer, I would move up as well. So really simple to use the move tool. The to duplicate, to scale. Also really simple to use the the text tool to add text in. You simply click what you want. Select the, the font style, you can scale it up, you can select the color. We only did black here, but we're trying to get something close to this. Up here, we're going to get a little bit more creative. So it says max at night. So I'm going to do, do some text warping up here and show you some other things you can do with this. Even though it looks like that, we're going to make ours a little bit different. Just like we did the stars, they just have dots here, but our stars are actually stars with a glow on it. So we have that much of it. Up here, we want to have max at night. So the at part is cursive, kind of like that. So I'm going to do that one first. The night and the max I can make on my own. We can do your own choice. So I'm going to do at. I'll go ahead and select it. And I know it's Mistral for that nice cursive. And I can change the color here to whatever I want. Let's say take that off. And I kind of like that color. And I want to scale it up. So I have that at. I might want to try a different one because I don't I'm not liking how that at looks. So let's, let's scale through and look at some other ones. And again, I'm just using my up and down keys. And I don't see anything too close. I can download some other fonts. I like that one. Brush script. That one looks very similar to me to that one. So I like that one a lot better. So we have max at, and it's kind of slanted, right? So to slant it, go ahead. Go back to my move tool. I can move it where I want it to go. I can click on Show Transform. If I go around the edge, you can see those two arrows. Whoops. Let's undo that. Let's cancel that. So if I go around the edge, it's not allowing me to rotate this one. It's actually trying to scale it both ways. So here's the key to that. All right, so we're going to use the actual Transform tool. So if you want to rotate it, we can go to Edit, Transform, and we can do rotate here. It puts the same box around, but it's only going to allow me to rotate. So we have that. And just like we've done before with our background, we can add effects to any of these layers. And effects is down here. So let's look at our guide. It's kind of a part of it, but I want it to stand out. So. I'm going to go ahead and look at our effects. Let's say if I wanted to do bevel and emboss, you could see it makes it 3D. I could size it up and make it more 3D. If I wanted to, I could add a drop shadow, which makes it look like it's popping off the, the screen. Um, an outer glow or inner glow. I could do an, let's see how an outer glow looks, like it's reflecting. And I could scale that out, right? Well, that's my bevel and emboss still. I have to actually click on outer glow. Here we go. I can scale out that glow. So it looks like it's glowing off the moon, right? So you can still, even with text, you can actually add layer effects by going to the bottom, just like we added for those. So I have my at. 
Now Max, I told you I'm going to do differently, and Knight I'm going to do differently. We're going to use text warping with those. So I'm going back to text tool. I'm going to type Max. I'm going to select it. I'm going to go through and try to find something that's similar. That's different, but is Max all caps? No, it's just they're bigger. Okay, so it looks like I'm going to have to separate this to do the M here. Does that M look like that M? It does. And then I'll have to do a X here and those look like that and the reason I'm separating the M from the AX is max is actually the same size so if you look here the M the A and the X are actually the same size if I did it in the same it wouldn't I couldn't scale it up so I actually can do the AX here and scale it up like this Oops, I need to select it first and scale it up. Keep scaling it till I have kind of what I have on the screen. So you can see I had to do M separately because the M is uppercase, the A and the X is lowercase. So whenever I, let's just say if I typed MAX, you could see it's not going to be the same size. So to avoid this, I actually made M separately on this layer and AX on this layer and I simply scaled up the AX that way they can match what's here. Super easy. So I'm going to delete this guy. I don't need that one. These two now, I'm going to select both because I want to scale both of these. I'm going to do, actually, so when I select two layers, I click on one, I can command click or shift click on that. And down here in your layers panel, you can actually chain those together. So when you chain them, they're saying they're linked. If I do something to one, if I move one, for example, I'm only selecting M and I move one, it's going to be chained. So if I scale this one, I'm on M, but I scale it you could see it's linked together, it's chained, so it's mirroring them. So you can see I can do max like that, approve it, take off my scaling. So this max looks very similar to that. I simply have to color it, do it differently, and I can do a bunch of different things with that. I'm going to double click on my M. Let's change that color, kind of like a yellow. So let's do yellow. Now, the thing I was telling you about up here that we have not used is your text warping. So let's click on that. For text warping, you can see here you can uh, apply an arc, an upper, lower. It allows you to warp your text. So for this, I want it to be, let's say if I want it to bulge, you can see it kind of makes it wrap around, right? Or if I did flag, it messes it up. Not something what we're looking for. Or if I did inflate, you can see it makes it look max more rounded, like it's a part of the moon, right? Arc upper or arc lower. There's a bunch of different ones. I can do max like that. And you can change these options down here. So if you didn't want it to bend that much, but you wanted it to kind of bend like that. So you can scale all these different ones, just like I did here. If I did like that, I could make it. So just wanted to show you some of the text tools. I think I'm going to do for this one, I'm going to do inflate. But with my inflate, I want to make my max 
more rounded like that. So I have max there. I'm going to do the same thing for these guys. I'll use a text warp. Let's see if I do an inflate again. I can move this guy over some. And I could make it less inflated, but I'll leave it like that. But I have to change the, the colors of this. So the A is orange, and this is kind of a darker orange. So I'm going to come back here, select only my A. Let's make it orange like that. Let's make this a darker orange. Let's actually make it the color down here so I can select this color. Actually, let's make it a little, a little darker orange, like uh, more of a red-ish, like that. So I have my three colors. Now, to kind of get this around, I'm going to just simply add a stroke. I could draw those on, but I'm going to go ahead and for this, I'm going to add a stroke. And I can bring this stroke up. It says outside, but I could do inside. Or I could do centered. And I can change the color of the stroke. So over here, it's like a dark orange. So I'm OK with that. And I can scale my stroke up a little bit more, like that. So that's 32. Do the same thing to my M. I'm going to add my layer effect stroke. I'm going to copy that color of this stroke by getting it exact. And this was 32 that we did over here. So you can see, even though we've played around with the text warping, Got something that looks kind of similar. The max, though, is in a straight line and it's not as big, so I'm going to scale my stuff down. It's really big here. So, because these two are changed, I'm going to go ahead back to my move tool. I'm going to do transform. I'm going to scale it down and put it kind of where it goes here. Max is really big like that. And I can accept it and turn off my transform controls. So there's my max. Now I need to move my at down like that. And I just simply need night. Now night is similar to max in the same font. It's just they're not equal. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the text tool. I'm just going to type out night. Now I forgot what it was. So if I come back, double click on this T, that is Boudini 72. So I come back to my night. Remember if you double click on the T, it highlights that. So I can I also type here Boudini, and once you start typing, it'll find it for you at night. And I want to scale that down. So I'm going to go here, scale it. I can move it. So let's say there. And it's a little bit darker, so let's do something like this. Max at night. Does that match? It's a little bit more gray. So let's come back and let's kind of like that. Just like I did before, I can add my little layer effect here. So let's just say I wanted to do outer glow. I could size it up so night is kind of glowing. And I have my at. My at now is a little bit different color, so I actually want to match that color to my night. 
which is kind of like that. Move my move tool. Max at night. And I have my night here. So again, you have so many different options that you want. So really, really simple. You can see I have my text layer. I did a bunch of different texts in there. I did by Ed Veer. I did New York best-selling author, creative of Max the Brave. I did Max at Night. And now I can go ahead and close that. And I, since I know I'm done with my text, I'm going to go ahead and lock that as well. So we have something that's really close. We have this. If we're looking over here, we have that. Last part of it is we have to kind of draw out this cat. So the cat has a really rounded head, has two little nubs for his ears. It doesn't really have separation for the body, and it has a tail. So we can draw a bunch of different ways in Photoshop. We're simply going to use the pencil tool. You can actually connect a tablet um, and a pen, and it will pick up if you're a really good artist. A lot of artists use Photoshop. But this is going to be your first experience with the brush tool. It's underneath the, the spot healing tool that looks like the Band-Aid. You might see this instead, but it's here. The pencil and the brush, color replacement and mixer tool are all in the same location. I'm going to click the, the pencil tool. Now, I'm going to make just a new layer. I'm going to call it cat. And I want to draw my cat in here. So the main features of this cat is like its big head, right? This head is oval, so I know how to do that. I can come here and use my marquee tool, my elliptical one, and kind of outline kind of the oval that I'm looking for. Something like that. Now to fill that in, we know how to do that. Simply use our paint bucket tool with the foreground color black, and I can fill that in. Now I don't need to select anything else, so I can go to select select and I kind of have my bases that I want to do. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to draw the two nubs using my pencil tool. So here, let's zoom in. That's my head. And my pencil tool, if you look at the options bar, you can size it up whatever you want. Bring it out. Let's size it up a little bit more. Yeah. You also, you can see you have a bunch of other options. Toggle the brush. You have what type of brush is it? The opacity, if the brush is going to be see-through or not. So you have options. Always when you use a tool, check your options. So let's do our ears. I'm going to do something like that. Something like that. If I wanted to fill those in, I'm simply going to use my paint bucket tool. It fills in solid areas. There's my ears. Let's go ahead back and look at the body. The body's kind of straight down, right? So we previously learned how to use the marquee tool or rectangular one. I'm going to do the exact same thing here. So I could draw it out. Let's actually let's draw it out so for your practice. I could do this because the body's coming straight down and do that and then fill it in, but I'm not. I'm going to use the pencil tool and just kind of freehand it. So I'm coming down. I'm making my little area like that. I can fill it in. Now let's go back and check. We have this really long tail that goes like a curve. So let's do that tail now. And to do the tail, I'm going to go back to my brush tool. I'm going to make this bigger because the tail is going to be a little bit thicker. Let's see. Yeah, that's a pretty good tail. Oh, actually, I want to make it thicker than that like 40. Yeah. So I'm just going to come down like that. And I can go back up if I wanted to. Then you can see it doesn't really have feet, but I'm going to add feet. We can free. It. So I'm going to say that's going to be my first foot. And I'm going to add and just simply color this in. I'm simply just adding on ad living really in this instance. So I have kind of have my shape of my guy. So let's add a little bit of detail. Max really doesn't have detail. If you look at the book, it's really kind of just hand drawn. And do the eyes. 
I'll do the nose, and then I'll add some details for the paws. So the eyes, I could, again, use yellow and do like this and do like this, but it's a little bit harder to do. So I'm going to actually use my elliptical marquee tool to make it a little bit more perfect. And I can fill that in. And then I can do it again. Same thing, right? And my paint bucket tool, fill it in. Now the eyes, if you look at it, this eye is a lot bigger, actually. I need to make that a lot bigger. And then the black parts of it. So make this a lot bigger. Fill that in. And to scale it, let's make this a little bit bigger. And I'll scale that in. Fill that in. So the middle part was simply black, just to be perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and do like that. Change my foreground color to black. And again, I'm gonna fill it in. Now I can simply use my keyboard shortcuts if I wanted this to be exactly the same. And I'm using my keyboard to move it across where I want it, up and down, left and right. I can fill it in again. And you can see I have really good close picture of this using the elliptical tool and the brush tool to kind of freehand it. Last part, let's go ahead and get the nose in there. Nose, I'm going to make mine's pink. And let's say my nose is here. And then I want to add some details in there. So I'm going to make my brush a lot smaller. And I'm going to add the mouth. Let's undo that. Let's do a little bit. And again, it's not going to be perfect. But you can see I can add that detail. So now we've used the pencil tool to kind of freehand draw. We did use some cheating by using this. We didn't draw out all of Max. But you have something very similar to the book here, Max Ignite. This has been a video that showed you how to use the text tool, which we did a bunch of different things inside this folder. And also the pencil tool here to help you draw out Max. Make sure you finish up your, your page and then turn in your assignment on the portfolio page. Again, if you don't remember how to turn in portfolio page, very bottom, turning in, I give you an example of what the page should look like here. So you're going to have Max, your version, and the original book cover. It tells you step by step here. My work, book cover, here's your reflection questions, and you turn in everything. At the bottom, I have a video to show you an example of how to turn in your, port your assignment on the portfolio page anyway. So if you get stuck, you can always come back here. And even though it's a different assignment, this video walks you through how to save your work and how to make a portfolio page. Um, good luck, and make sure you turn in everything. See you on the next video.